Hello everyone, this is the capsaicin that I extracted from a Carolina Reaper pepper. For those who don't know, capsaicin is the substance that gives red peppers their characteristic burning, spicy taste. I ran an analysis and the capsaicinoid content in this substance is about 90%. Today I'm going to show you how I extracted it. The method is quite simple and is based on a Chinese article, the link to which will be in the description. Step 1. Procuring the pepper. First buy high capsaicin peppers, preferably already ground. I bought Carolina Reaper. This pepper can contain up to 10% capsaicin and personally I'd classify it as a chemical weapon. I do not recommend grinding it yourself, you will cough and sneeze a lot. You can buy it pre-ground and I highly recommend doing so. Step 2. Extraction using a Soxlet apparatus. The next step is extraction. You can extract capsaicin with any alcohol or ethyl acetate. In this video I am using ethyl acetate and a Soxlet extractor. It took about 4 hours for the complete extraction of 50 grams of pepper. I loaded another 50 grams of pepper with the same portion of solvent to get a more concentrated extract. Next, I evaporated the solvent as much as possible on a stirring plate to get rid of the ethyl acetate. Step 3. Hydrolysis and Neutralization The next step is hydrolysis with a 10% sodium hydroxide solution. I used 200 milliliters of solution for this. According to the article, hydrolysis should be carried out for 4 hours at 50 degrees Celsius. That's exactly what I did. After hydrolysis, the solution should be clear. If there is any precipitate or resin, it must be filtered through cotton wool. Keep in mind that with a large amount of capsaicinoids, their sodium salts may precipitate out when cold, turning the solution into a jelly. So be careful not to filter out the valuable product. It is best to filter the warm solution. After filtering, the solution must be cooled to 5 degrees Celsius, and hydrochloric or acetic acid is added until the pH is 7. This will cause the capsaicinoids to precipitate as a fine solid. Step 4. Product isolation and analysis. The filtration is poor, it's very slow, and the filter always clogs. After filtering, the product even melted on the filter and then recrystallized again. This substance here is not entirely solid, it's a mixture of crystals and oil. I sent this material for chromatomass spectrometry. In the spectrum, capsaicin and dihydrocapsaicin are easily identifiable. Their total amount is 90%. The article states that the capsaicinoid content should be 96% and also contain about 5% of nordihydrocapsaicin. Most likely, it is also present in my mixture, likely around 5%, but I couldn't identify it on the spectrum. So, for now, I can only report 90% capsaicinoids in the mixture. I performed the isolation again, but this time I decided that filtering the capsaicinoids was a pointless exercise and simply extracted them with ethyl acetate. Unfortunately, the separation of the layers is incomplete because some of the precipitate does not dissolve in ethyl acetate, and to fully extract the capsaicinoids, filtration is still necessary. I then dried the ethyl acetate extract with sodium sulfate and evaporated the solvent. I like this isolation method much better. To obtain pure capsaicin, you can recrystallize the product. Theoretically, the isopropanol hexane or ethyl acetate hexane system should work, perhaps requiring reduced temperatures as capsaicin's melting point is not very high. Such crystallization would lead to a loss of dihydrocapsaicin, which I also need. So I will conclude the capsaicinoid isolation here. That's all for today. Subscribe to my Telegram channel. I will post my experiments there before I release the video.